Um, there's a lot of tension and sort of tribalism going on in climate, which is too bad, and it's needless, and it sort of should be beneath the dignity of rational people. But the reason that it happens is because our climate models are pretty bad, all right? And this is showing a collection of a large number of models, actually fairly similar models, but run with very different parameters, predicting what would happen to global mean temperature if you doubled CO2. This is a project where actually a group in England asked for volunteers from ordinary people to volunteer their, their idle personal computer time for this project. So if you volunteered, they'd come in in the middle of the night when you weren't using your computer and, and run their climate model on it, okay? And by this means, they were able to achieve much more computation than they could with a large computer. And after many, many, um, uh, let's say this is 100,000 such simulations, you get kind of this bell-shaped curve. And I think this is sort of the crux of the problem if you want to look at this. Now, I've told you that temperature isn't the problem, but we'll use it as sort of a proxy for the degree of climate change. And doubling CO2, okay, the most probable outcome as summarized by the IPCC is sort of in the range of two or three degrees. But there's a tail at the low end. It could be, you know, one and a half to two degrees. And there's a tail at the high end uh, going out to five and six degrees. So here's the sociological problem. If it turns out to be here, we probably don't have much of a problem, frankly, okay? We don't have much of a problem because it's just not much change. If it turns out to be in this range, there'll be problems for sure, but probably we will be mostly successful in adapting to them, at least according to people who study adaptation. We'll get along, all right? It will be expensive and there'll be dislocations. Um, if it's out here, that really is catastrophic. No, I'm not an alarmist. I'm not chicken little. I'm not standing on a soapbox crying. There's a low probability but not zero probability that we're headed for a catastrophe, okay? And everybody in my field who studied this problem recognizes it. That's the tail, okay? You have to consider the tail. You don't focus on this part of the curve. Um, let me give you an analogy. You probably pay one or two thousand dollars more for your car because it has airbags. The chance that you will be in an accident and have the airbag deploy, an accident big enough to that, is small, fortunately but you're willing to pay more for it because the outcome is so bad. You don't want to get killed, right? That's, we automatically, as a species, account for tail risk, except oddly enough in this problem where we want to focus on the things that don't look so scary. We have to start thinking about the tail risk. Marty Weitzman at Harvard, an economist, has uh, given lots of very interesting talks about this subject. But, we have to be careful because doubling CO2, although it's canonical, we're on a track to do much more than doubling CO2. These are projections of greenhouse gas, of carbon dioxide concentration under different emission scenarios. So business as usual, this curve here, we go up to about 1,000 parts per million, more than a tripling by the end of the century. Doubling is this light blue line. So under this scenario, in the lifetimes of some of the people in the audience, probably not me, we will double CO2, but we're just going to sail beyond that. Now, if we go back to the previous chart, the science really is very conservative. This is for doubling. If you go to tripling or quadrupling, you move this whole, expand this whole curve to the right. Then you're really starting to up the probabilities of very, very serious outcomes. And here is the final sort of crux of the problem is the lifetime of CO2. How long does it take CO2 to go away? Well, these are curves that show, first of all, the history of CO2 concentration, but also projections. And then hypothetically, we're going to absolutely shut down CO2 emissions when it gets to 450 or 550 or 650 parts per million. And watch what happens to the CO2. It drops at first very quickly, but then much more slowly. This is a scenario where it goes all the way up to 1,200 parts per million, which the Earth hasn't seen in about 60 million years, but which we could easily get to. And then it drops off. And look, you know, after several thousands of years, it's still very elevated. It takes a long, long time for it to go away. This is a particular climate model's rendition of what the global mean surface temperature would do under these scenarios. So the problem is, unless we can figure out how to take CO2 out of the atmosphere, we're stuck for thousands of years with the result of what we're doing.